Oklahoma would remain dominant against the Longhorns going into the 2010s, starting the decade with back-to-back -back wins in Dallas. It's time for our picks. Brian, go first. KOCO's sports director, Brian Keating, getting his first experience at the Cotton Bowl in 2012. Well, it's so cool to watch the environment here. It is like a bowl game, and I know we say that every single season, but to see people from everywhere dressed in different colors and there's no home field advantage, it is so cool to be here, and you just feel the buzz yeah. coming through the, the state fair as we get to the Cotton Bowl. Four years later, Baker Mayfield left his mark on this legendary matchup. The Texas-born quarterback would put up record-breaking numbers, 390 passing yards, three touchdowns, and all three went to Didi Westbrook, who also racked up 232 yards receiving. Both Mayfield's passing yards and Westbrook's receiving yards are the most in the history of OU Texas. Following that epic 2016 season, Oklahoma fans were stunned to have to say goodbye to the head coach with nearly 200 wins for the Crimson and Cream, Bob Stoops. Shockwaves from Memorial Stadium and beyond, a bombshell announcement in the world of Oklahoma sports. OU head coach Bob Stoops retiring. The official word coming in just a few hours ago, this is still late breaking. Uh, stepping down after 18 years um, as the head football coach here at Oklahoma and uh, feel like I've been absolutely the luckiest, most fortunate guy in the world. Because the man chosen to fill that coveted role, his offensive years, coordinator, his Lincoln Riley. Riley would lead the Sooners to a 12-2 record and a 29-24 win over Texas in his first season as head coach in 2017. Going into the 2018 season, the Golden Hat had spent 260 weeks in Norman over a five-year span. Quarterback Kyler Murray on a mission to make sure that didn't change. He hit it. But in the end, it would not be enough. The final score 48 to 45. A heartbreaking loss, but redemption was on the horizon. Just seven weeks later, the two teams would meet once again, this time at Jerry's World in Arlington for the Big 12 championship. But this was Kyler Murray's Heisman moment. Murray and CeeDee Lamb connected for a second quarter 28-yard touchdown, which sparked Oklahoma's comeback win and punched their ticket to the college football playoff. All right, I mean, as you can see around it, I mean, preparation still underway here at the Cotton Bowl. It takes a lot of work to get ready for OU Texas. Sure does. But the work isn't done until the Roughnecks plant the grass here at the Cotton Bowl. Got to plant the grass. And you know they say the grass isn't greener on the other side, but Sooner fans would disagree. They think they have the better team and probably the better blades of grass, too. Our own Audrey Goodson is with the grass people, the Roughnecks. You may have seen them on the sideline at OU football games or driving the Sooner schooner, but there are many traditions that the organization has that you might not have heard of, especially when it comes to OU Texas weekend. Every Sooner fan knows that driving the Sooner schooner is an important job. But the night before OU Texas, schooner driver and Roughneck President Connor Amy has what could be an even more important role. We protect the ponies not before, make sure no Texas fans, no Texas football players, or you know anybody's trying to mess with them, paint them orange or something, that would be terrible. But that's not the only tradition he and the Roughnecks have for the weekend. And although the game is played at the Cotton Bowl, the organization always makes sure that the Sooners have a home field advantage. <laughs> So we will go into the stadium and we'll, at the end of the last game before you, Texas, we'll take some of the grass out of the field and we'll put it in one of our shotgun shells and bring it down to the Cod Bowl and we'll just take it inside of our uniform and um, we'll, we'll take the grass out and we'll sprinkle it on the, on the 50. They say this tradition gives the Sooners good luck and brings a piece of Owen Field to Dallas. And the Roughnecks say their famous paddles also bring the team favor. Tell me what these paddles are for. So the only thing the paddles are used for at this point is something we call Pavada. It's a long-standing tradition. We start on the 50-yard line on our field, and we run to the north end zone and slide in, and we have some words that we say, and we beat our paddles on the ground. That is to rid the field of any spirits, bad spirits, that would help us make us lose. Many of these OU Texas traditions have dated back since the Roughnecks became an official organization in 1915. They brought on the Lil Sis program in 1973. When you say Roughneck, it's not just a name. We really take something to that. We, we wear this, the patch on our back with pride. 
but the traditions are even more visible back in Norman. The Roughnecks call it Paint Texas, a tradition since 1983. We all come down right here um, and we paint uh, a little phrase on the ground, um, kind of to like hype up the university and get everyone ready for that OU Texas like game day atmosphere. The Sunday night leading up to the game, you'll see the Roughnecks and Lil Sis, as well as their alumni, painting Beat the Hell Out of Texas on the sidewalk near Asp Avenue in Elm. But there's one last tradition that's personal for their leader. Texas has a rival organization called the Silver Spurs, and the presidents of both clubs have something of their own on the line that depends on the final score of the game. We've made a deal that has been long going for years that the winning president shaves the losing president's head. So I've got a little more on the line this year, I'm a little more nervous about it, but I have confidence in our team. And they say that these traditions will continue for years to come. In Norman, Audrey Goodson, KOCO 5 News. So, man, we're talking about the turf. We know for a fact this turf has been completely tore up by some of the great plays we've seen on this field. But what's your favorite? Oh, my gosh. I mean, so many in the history of this series. I'm just going to go back a couple of years. I don't know if it's my favorite play, but it's essentially winning on the last play of the game. It's Kennedy Brooks out of the Wildcat, takes the ball, runs. OU beats Texas in 2021. Last play of the game, one second left, yeah. 33 yards, and it caps off the biggest comeback in the history of this series. So, of course, one of the best plays we've seen in OU Texas. Yeah, and part of that call, part of the OU radio network, was Gabe Eicher, four-year starter at Oklahoma, former All-American at Oklahoma. Right. We talked to him about what it means to be a part of OU Texas. There is just nothing like the chaotic energy <laughs> of the Cotton Bowl on that Saturday in October. and. It's special. Everyone talks about the 50-50 split, and that's great, but just the entire scene, everything about it. I mean, they put a football stadium in the middle of the state fair. <laughs> I mean, that's it's, it's the most college football thing you can imagine, and that's what makes it great. Do you remember putting on the hat? I, yes. And first of all, it is not metal. People think it's metal. It's yeah. definitely not. And there's actually a pretty embarrassing picture of me. I think it's 2012, 2011 and 2012. We just absolutely whooped them. I mean, it was just, we, we just absolutely took it to them. And there's a picture of me putting it on and I have this very like almost pained look on my face. And it's because the inside of the hat, the paint, was chipping. The hat stabbed me in the forehead. It like literally cut me. Really? It literally cut me. And I was just like, wait, this is not how it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to be smiling. Right. And I got my I've got my pictures <laughs> smiling with it on. But yeah, that's what it, that's like my number one memory is being like the hat has it has made me bleed. So yeah, there's a little bit of my blood on that thing. You are looking live at one of the great scenes in all of college football. Well the first time I remember walking down, you know, as redshirt freshman starting in that game for the first time, and I started in four of them. Right. You get more comfortable each year, but the first time I was just trying not to, like, throw up on myself. I was like, oh, my God, it's happening. <laughs> right, growing up as an OU fan, yeah. it, you know, you know what that game means. Yeah. But you just you try to look as confident as possible. Yeah. And as I, you know, went deeper into my career, started talking a little more, uh, letting – Letting the Longhorns uh, know how I felt, <laughs> and I was not a trash-talking guy, but for whatever that, for whatever reason, that game it uh, the switch it, it, it got flipped for sure. But it's just a special feeling. Like you, even you still think about it, you get chills. It's just it is such a scene, and you know you you think about the history of the game, what it means, especially as an Oklahoma kid, mm -hmm. what that game means to essentially everyone I know <laughs> and there's you feel that weight but the good thing about it is once the ball gets kicked off it's football right it's you versus the man across from you in between white lines and you can kind of forget about all the other stuff but it's just it's special Oklahoma won its first national championship of the 2000s in the year 2000 and it was on ever since High expectations for the Sooners in all of the years to follow, but we'll get to relive those first few years after that 2000 national title through the eyes of former Sooner quarterback Paul Thompson, who joins us next in the Red River Rewind.